10.0.7 is one of the biggest patches we're seeing so far in Dragonflight, having a ton of meta shifting changes being issued. Is Affliction Warlock going to be the most dominant caster with the new additions they're getting? Are the Ret Paladin reworks going to miraculously give them the strength to climb out of their wheelchair? We've got all this to answer and so much more as we bring you guys the updated tier list for 10.0.7 thanks to the help of our Rank 1 consultants and analyzing the most recent PTR build. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you truly want to climb rating in WoW Arena. We are the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 400 rating while actively using our guides. We do this because we're so confident our service works, and if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of the video or click the link below. One melee spec that's becoming a whole lot stronger in this patch, but is still heavily being slept on, is Survival Hunter. Survival is seeing massive buffs to their already high sustained damage, with a 25% damage increase to Serpent Sting, on top of a 100% damage increase on Death Chakram, making their burst damage even more impactful as well. These also come alongside a very nice buff to the talent Rejuvenating Wind, netting them an additional 8% health. This, coupled with a multitude of nerfs to some of the more popular melee, puts Survival in the upper echelons of our A tier. Another melee seeing some pretty big changes is Unholy Death Knight. A huge shift in the talent tree now makes the talent Unholy Blight, previously one of their top overall damage abilities, a lot less obtainable now. But with the buffs to Harbinger of Doom to now also increase death coil damage, there is a potential that these changes will cause a big shift in how Unholy plays, with them now opting for a more single target oriented spec revolving around death coil and ghoulish frenzy. For Unholy's tierless placement, despite these changes, we'll still be remaining inside of our B tier. The biggest change to melee comes with the long-awaited Retribution Paladin rework, where despite this massive huge wall of text of changes, Brett players are still somehow stuck with the same exact problem they've always suffered from, a lack of mobility. But at least now Crusader Strike has an extra 3 yard range. To sum this rework up though, Rhett is looking to be without a doubt a lot stronger than previously. New talents additions, like Seething Flame for example, still enable that massive burst during Avenging Wrath that you come to expect. But with the cooldown of wings reduced to only 60 seconds, it's going to be now coming a lot more regularly. Then, in addition to that, we're also going to be seeing a decent increase to damage outside of wings as well with talents like Expurgation and Penitence. Another welcome change is that Divine Protection is now baseline for Retribution, providing some much needed survivability to help survive stuns, which can be taken alongside Shield of Vengeance as well as talents like Aegis of Protection to further buff them both. Rhett will be set to be a lot more durable while still being very strong on the damage front. For Retribution Paladin's tierless placement, they will be moving up one tier, going from B into A for patch 10.0.7. Subtlety Rogues are also seeing some big tuning adjustments going into the patch, with nerfs to both Dark Shadow, Dense Macabre, and Perforated Veins targeted at reducing burst damage, and then to compensate, both Backstab and Gloom Blade will be buffed with the aim of bringing sustained damage up. These changes will definitely bring Sub more in line with other melee, but these changes don't accomplish much else, as sustained damage will still remain very low and burst will still be high whenever Secret Technique is available. Overall, these changes, despite seeming drastic, shouldn't affect Sub Rogue's placement on our tier list and will remain in A tier. This leaves our melee tier list looking very similar to last patch. Arms Warrior, after a very small nerf to Fatality, which does nothing to affect Solo Shuffle, still remain to be ahead of the pack. Our A tier overall is pretty stacked, with both assassinations still doing very well despite the nerfs. Demon Hunters did see some very slight changes, making them slightly weaker overall, with the big one being the nerf to reverse magic. Then both Windwalker and Feral with the patch received some pretty negligible damage buffs. Overall though, none of these changes are enough to warrant any of these specs climbing or dropping on our list. In our graveyard for Unwanted for Melee specs, also known as our B tier, Frost Death Knight gets some very nice changes with added damage, including some much needed added pressure outside of Pillar. On top of some key abilities now being baseline, and in regards to organized 3v3 will undoubtedly be much more competitive in 10.0.7. But still, much like Enhancement, who even see some big healing stream buffs this patch, suffer massively with the unpredictability of solo shuffle lobbies and their lack of a mortal strike effect, so for now, we'll still be remaining at B tier. The ranged list is where we see the biggest shakeup this patch. All three Warlock specs are receiving some very nice damage buffs, most notably being the damage increase to Inquisitor's Gaze, alongside new talents in the form of Sargari Technique, providing an increase to either Shadow Bolt, Incinerate, or Drain Soul damage depending on your spec, and Sorkrathar's Guile, increasing either Agony, Wild Imp, or Immolate damage, again depending on your spec. 
Destruction, however, will be heavily targeted with massive nerfs to Bane of Havoc and Mayhem Synergy, attaching an internal cooldown of 18 seconds to the ability. On top of that, we're also seeing damage reductions to both Incinerate and Shadow Burn. This will be a pretty big loss in overall damage for Destruction Warlocks, heavily impacting the current go-to instant damage build that's very popular right now. Overall, Destruction will still remain to be incredibly strong after these changes, but just more in line with other specs. We'll be moving Destruction down one tier to A+. Affliction gets even more buffs with further increases to Drain Soul and Rapture, with two new talents in the form of Dark Virtuosity and Kindled Malice, as well as some targeted changes to further bolster non-casted damage with buffs to both Corruption, Agony, and Siphon Life. However, nerfs to focused malignancy will tone down Affliction's damage when left to free cast. One indirect change and a massive relief for Affliction is the change to Reverse Magic to now cause the Demon Hunter to suffer backlash damage is a massive buff for Affliction as this was one of its biggest counters. These changes will be a huge overall buff to Affliction and cause them to jump up one position moving from B tier up to A tier, but definitely have the potential to climb higher if the meta favors them. Demonology enthusiasts are by far the winners out of the three Warlock specs, as we're seeing massive buffs to both Guillotine as well as a new talent in Immutable Hatred to further enhance your pet Felguard's damage, which is already going to be doing massive damage with all-around pet damage buffs. Most notably for Demonology is the huge buff to Reign of Tyranny, which is perfect for PvP as it removes some of the ramp-up required and adds a 50% baseline increase to the damage of Tyrant. These coupled with the Warlock specific changes are enough to catapult Demonology Warlock from A tier up to S tier. The spec climbing the most on our range tier list is Marksmanship Hunter. Admittedly, last tier list, our placement of B was slightly too low, as MM Hunter is proving to be one of the most impactful ranged classes in all of Shuffle, having super high burst damage coupled with easy to land crowd control. Couple that with damage buffs to both Death Chakram and Serpent Sting, as well as the additional stamina from Rejuvenating Wind for more survivability, you can see why Marksmanship Hunters are climbing all the way from our B tier to their new placement of A+. Elemental Shamans are another ranged spec receiving some minor changes, mainly targeting their survivability with slight buffs to Astral Shift and the mobility of Thunderous Paws. The biggest changes comes from the reworked Swelling Waves, buffing Healing Stream Totem by 80% for Elemental, which will drastically bolster their off-healing. The biggest buff to Elemental, though, comes with the fact that both Assassination and Subtlety Rogues, two of their biggest counters, have been drastically toned down over the recent patches. A plus tier is where Elemental will be placed in 10.0.7, moving up one tier. For the ranged tier list, Beast Mastery, after some very unjust buffs to kill command damage, will remain in our S tier, but now be joined by Demonology instead of Destruction, who will be dropping down to our A plus tier. Frost Mages, after some tuning adjustments to Glacial Damage, coupled with buffs to both Beast Mastery and Demonology, will be dropping from S down to A plus tier, and find themselves alongside Marksman, Destruction, and Elemental Shaman. Both Shadow and Arcane Mage remain inside of A tier with no direct changes. Balance Druid, however, did receive a nice change to Stellar Drift, adding some pseudo dispel protection into the ability, but while definitely a buff, this will not be enough to alter their position, leaving Devastation and Fire Mage at the bottom of the list. Healers are getting the most changes this patch, and to start, we'll look at the preservation changes. Ouroboros is getting a complete rework, rendering the talent useless, as now the only ability it affects is Emerald Blossom rather than Echo. Although definitely a rather large nerf, not every preservation was playing this talent to begin with. Then we have reworked to Ancient Flame, coupled with its position on the Evoker Tree, allowing for it to be much more accessible. Rewind, among other strong raid cooldowns, are also being greatly buffed inside of Arena this patch, so preservation evokers should be looking to remain about the same strength going into patch, leaving them still inside of our S tier. Mist Weavers are benefiting greatly from the patch, with both Fist Weaving builds and Standard Healing builds being buffed. The biggest of which being a change to now make Thunder Focus T make your next enveloping instant cast, which is massive for both variants of Mistweaver. And just like with Preservation, the buffs to raid cooldowns inside of Arena are huge for both Revival and Restoral Healing. Most of the patch notes are, however, aimed towards the standard healing build, with beneficial changes across the board. These should go on to make the build a competitive option for matchups where fist weaving may be difficult. These changes and the recent success of fist weaving as a whole will cause mist weavers to jump up from A tier to A plus tier. Restoration Shamans look to be making a push back into meta for patch 0.7 after receiving some really nice buffs, including massive increases to both healing stream and healing tide throughput, as well as slight buffs to the passive healing from Earth Living Weapon. 
And despite losing the added casted healing from the removal of swirling currents, an all around 8% buff to all healing should push Restoration Shamans further into a fully instant healing build, leaving much more room for them to excel with their disruptive gameplay. We'll be moving Shaman up two tiers from B up to A plus for 10.0.7 solo shuffle, but predict them to be one of the best healers now for coordinated 3v3. Holy Paladin is another healer receiving a lot of changes this patch, with huge reworks to the Paladin tree as a whole. The most exciting addition from this rework is without a doubt the new end cap of Fading Light. This will attach a 20% absorb to all of your Holy Power generating abilities, most noteworthy of which being Holy Shock. Then Divine Toll will also be moving from Holy to the Paladin Tree, allowing you to pick up Sanctified Wrath instead, which may promote a standard healing build being preferred over the Avenging Wrath Melee Wings alternative. We believe these changes should be enough to edge Holy Paladin slightly more into the meta, but as of yet, don't warrant them being placed any higher on our list, and will for now remain in B tier. Restoration Druid players have been up in arms about the rework to the talent tree, with the main complaint being germination and power of the Arch Druid swapping places, making the standard Life Bloom and germination build far less accessible. This will cause some slight changes to their healing profile, making them overall slightly weaker HPS wise. And with almost all other healing specs benefiting from the patch, Restoration Druids will end up being slightly outclassed. We can all agree that Holy Priest has undoubtedly needed some buffs, and 10.0.7 is giving them a nudge in the right direction. Moderate buffs to Renew, Prayer of Mending, Flash Heal, and Heal are all going to massively help with very clear throughput issues. But while definitely helping, this more than likely isn't going to not be enough to push Holy Priest back into the meta, especially not in Solo Shuffle. Meaning Holy Priest will have to remain in hibernation until those very juicy 10.1 changes where they can add Spirit Link to their cooldown arsenal. We'll be keeping Holy Priest in our bottom tier of B. Overall, the top of our healing tier list remains the same as last patch, with Disciplined Priest, despite damage nerf, still performing very well, and the slight buffs to Renew will further reinforce their S tier placement. Both Restoration Shamans and Mistweavers are the ones that climb the most this patch, and are definitely ones to watch, leaving both Holy Paladin and Holy Priest a lot stronger this patch, but still not getting the changes they need to climb out of our bottom tier. If you want to improve fast and get the rating you've always wanted this season, then look no further than SkillCap.com. We're the only place on the planet where you can find hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries, where the best players in the world teach you the secret strategies to beat the toughest lobbies. And the best part? It's completely risk-free to try it out, as you're kept safe with rank-up insurance. What this means is that if you don't significantly improve while actively using SkillCap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Check us out with the link in the description below and achieve the rank you've always wanted. So there you have it guys, a complete update on the solo shuffle tier list for patch 10.0.7. Thank you all for watching, good luck in your climb, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great day.